just a second. Um, okay. Just a second. Okay, so now we are recording. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, uh, Mr. Farai. Uh, right now, I uh, I will share your presentation. Um, uh, I think now, uh, ca ca can you see the presentation right now? Yes, I can see the presentation. Thank you. But that is perfect. That is perfect. So it's uh, an introduction to quantum tech ecosystem. So uh, the mic is yours. Uh, and uh, sure. I'm you, as usual. We can move to the next slide already. Oh, so sure. We, we catch up with time. Okay, so um, I would start by showing you the quantum tech uh, ecosystem as we see it, because it gives us context of, of where we are and where we need to be. Um, and it also allows us to place Africa in this whole space uh, in context and allow us to understand where we are, what role we can play what other um, people are doing and uh, what is happening globally because we have an opportunity to to catch up and short circuit in terms of development as a as a continent that is the beauty sometimes of being left behind and also building on the lessons we have learned from classical computing which i now i understand that perhaps all of you are now comfortable with the the differences between classical computing and quantum computing. Um, so this is the view that we have of the quantum tech ecosystem in 2018. But I will build on it, and uh, you will see that uh, this is being skewered a lot by the investments that were pledged by China in 2018, which was $10 billion into the industry. So it, it shows you how much uh, the uh, big countries in the world see quantum, they see it as a very important milestone which can turn around economies, produce new areas of growth, provide jobs for young people. And uh, given how serious quantum is, we cannot afford to just let it unfold without our contribution because we have to also participate and shape it to, you know, uh, overcome the, the barriers of the past to. to make sure that we bridge the divides that we have seen being created by classical computing and to make it work in our own circumstances. Our problems are unique and uh, they need um, our full contribution in order for them to be solved because we are the ones who understand them. Um, also, as we have noticed already uh, with COVID-19, it has proven that the world is much more connected than we ever thought. So developments in Africa, contributions done from Africa can now also be used at the global stage to, you know, to, to, to improve solutions and to give perspective to, to, to a lot of problems. So when you look at that as well, obviously you can't avoid uh, seeing that in Africa we have not seen any major investments being announced in, announced in the space. Of course, countries have been investing in, in uh, information science, quantum information science, in research, uh, we have seen a number of labs in nanotechnology being set up uh, across the continent. Uh, we have also seen a number of these events that um, are good starters for building the ecosystem happening. Uh, in theoretical and computational physics, people have been gathering and exchanging ideas on, on, on this field for a long time now. And that is the foundation I was alluding to earlier to say we are building on it. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, in that context, we, we have not seen really investments by governments uh, getting um, getting smaller per se. Uh, for example, to get, just catch up with the last slide, in 2019 we saw around 2.54 billion coming in from government, 7 billion in 2020. Now already, just by the end of January in 2021, we have seen pledges of up to 3.5 billion that we can check and verify coming into the ecosystem from government. And what that shows you, we never know how we are going to end the year, but it shows you that there is a lot of awareness in terms of government to say we need to invest in this space, in education, in developing skills, in building uh, other aspects of the ecosystem, like hubs where people can come together, discuss about the technology, build solutions, test them, uh, you know, if policymakers, people from uh, us and humanities also contributing 
to make sure that we are building solutions that uh, uh, that meet local needs and local context and that you fit in within the ethics paradigm. And we just do it right this time as we build on quantum. So, uh, excuse me, we have um, here a look at the quantum tech startups by country as of June 2020. And you will see Africa we now showing a bit of light there. And I'm happy to say when I've spoken to thought leaders in quantum in Africa, they are more uh, oriented to look at um, how we can build startups, how we can uh, register IP, how we can build solution instead of just being uh, uh, only ending on research and people end up leaving the continent and this whole skills drain, it doesn't happen without end. It uh, doesn't seem to happen without end. So those are small pockets of progress we have seen on the startup ecosystem with startups uh, on quite a number of countries in Africa that we have been able to check and verify. South Africa obviously focused more on uh, building solutions that are related to uh, AI, but um, of, of course aspects of computational capacity like in HPC. But we've also seen some startups in uh, quantum communications from Libya, uh, those that are involved in education as well, to build capacity, to educate people, to make them aware about quantum, uh, also in taking root in the continent. Uh, and that is a, a, a good indication of the progress that we're beginning to see from the continent. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I thought I would share this slide that we prepared when we were looking at quantum tech leaders across the world and where they have studied. Uh, and you will be uh, obviously not shocked to notice that we, we don't have any African university that has contributed yet. And we are going to have this changing in the near future, I'm sure. Um, we have got most of the CEOs, directors and departments of quantum. It is, this data is cured because of the number of entities that we have in the quantum tech ecosystem who happen to be outside Africa. But I thought I would share it just for fun and say we want to see this changing. It definitely, for some of those roles, these people left Africa, went into universities abroad, and they began to lead uh, quantum tech organizations uh, in uh, coming from there. Because most of the times you need a higher qualification, like a PhD, to understand and unpack uh, quantum. And that has been happening over the years, but it is changing now. It was the same case even for classical computing anyway. In the, when it was beginning, it was more of a prison for PhDs and um, you know, high level uh, kind of education. But uh, over time, almost right now, even somebody in kindergarten is already doing some classical uh, computing or learning about classical computing in one way or another. And that is going to also happen in quantum. And this is why we need everyone to come in and get involved. Uh, next slide, please. So, this is a very important conversation, and I'm happy that you guys have been attending uh, quantum summer school, and uh, that's the beginning, because you have to start with education to make people aware of what quantum is and what it is not, to so that you guys can also make people in your small communities aware of quantum and the differences, the kind of opportunities it presents, and we can all fight this hype where you know quantum computing is misrepresented. And uh, you know it is always treated as um, and the next step in, in in classical computing when they are totally different and focusing on different aspects in terms of problems that they they can solve and handle very well. Um, we also did uh, an analysis of um, uh, the ethnic the ethnics uh, where people come from in terms of are they Caucasian are they from Europe are they from Africa are they Hispanic are they black uh, black American or African American and etc. So you will see that uh, we we still have a lot of work to do and I shared this to just show you the gaps that are there in the ecosystem and the gaps that we have to plug in the gaps that we have to fill. Uh, because if we don't do that, then these Im imbalances are going to persist and it, uh, this technology is not going to have uh, an impact that it should have. Uh, technology, as I look at it, is an enabler. It, is, uh, it changes lives, it improves how we are connected as a people, 
for example, right now we are able to share these ideas and I'm in Zimbabwe and you guys are doing this from Egypt, it wouldn't be possible without technology enabling us to do it. So we remember the moment we don't participate in this conversation is imbalances persist. Uh, it's very difficult for people to tell your story or to understand things from your perspective if you are not involved. And it is important that after the summer school, we don't forget about quantum uh, and, and we, we learn more about the ecosystem and we look for uh, slots where we can plug in and contribute depending on your domain expertise and what you want to focus on and what you think you are excited to work on. There is a room for everybody to contribute in quantum and you need to take it forward and to keep this conversation going. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is the trend that we have seen uh, in the, uh, for startup taking in terms of the kind of in investment that have been coming into quantum tech startups. So when I speak of quantum tech, uh, I'm speaking of the whole ecosystem, which involves your metrology and sensing, your computing and stimulation, um, your, your communications, uh, quantum key distribution, and uh, there are also other companies that are focused on other aspects of the ecosystem, like your support technology, which is your nanotechnology, which are components that they have to, you know, enable a lot of these other technologies that I've, uh, I've talked about. So obviously a lot of investment is still going into the hardware because without the hardware, we won't be able to deliver the solution. So we still need to do a lot of work in terms of uh, uh, realizing uh, capable hardware. And a lot of progress is being done very fast in this, in, in this space. Uh, and obviously you need software. And it's interesting that for the first time we, we have seen a lot of interest in software when the hardware that is going to deliver quantum advantage is not even there. But uh, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good for the industry and we are seeing the ecosystem progressing very fast. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of investments in sensing and in communications and quantum chip distribution. And I think we learned that uh, these are delivering value today. And uh, so there is a lot of revenue that is being generated by the products and services that are being offered. So this field doesn't thrive entirely on, um, on, on government funding, on venture capital funding. Of course, that funding will be required to, to, to grow this field and, and um, uh, make it far reaching. But uh, for those that are operating in the space, there are already solutions. There is already hardware that is tried and tested that people are buying and realizing value from. Um, so there is still a lot of work to be done in hardware and software, but there are also other fields like sensing and communications and key, quantum key distribution where you can still contribute. Uh, next slide. Um, and this is just the quantum tech investment trends that we see. And, and like you, you, you see quantum hardware there obviously taking a lot of the, of the investments and uh, software, like I mentioned, still doing the same. Next slide, please. Um, so I, I thought I would, I would also share the quantum tech investments by category that we've seen uh, um, as of, uh, this was as of the 13th of November in 2020. So, like I was mentioning, there's a lot of investment that is going into quantum computing hardware. There's a lot of investment that is going into quantum computing hardware. There is um, quantum computing software also taking a, a small chunk this time around because a lot of the money, because when you look closely, we realize that a lot of the money that is going into software is more focused on the algorithm side, where people are building solutions for optimization, uh, drug discovery related to uh, AI and all these things. So it means the world is really hungry for solutions. People want a solution that can uh, either use some quantum technique to enhance its um, performance or something that could be entirely uh, quantum, which is what a lot of people are exploring. And I think you heard from uh, earlier presentation and earlier presentations on, on some of these developments and what can be achieved and what people are learning very fast and contributing to in this space. And there is still a lot of money that is going into 
quantum information science, which is your research, you building the hub, uh, enabling the ecosystem, allowing people to come together to exchange these ideas. And I thought I could just put it in perspective and just share this slide. Um, next slide, please. Right, so growing quantum in Africa, which is the exciting part. You know, so like I said, there has been a lot of meetings that have been happening for a long time now in, 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 in quantum and initiating this conversation. And um, uh, for example, I was part of a quantum summer school that was hosted by IBM and FITS in South Africa in 2019, led on to the QSKIT Quantum Africa, uh, which also occurred in December of 2019. And these have been, because I can speak on this at a, at a, at a personal level, these this have been amazing because they allowed me to appreciate the importance of an ecosystem. And it is that ecosystem that brings us to this conversation today. I wonder if my contribution to quantum in Africa would have been uh, sustainable if I was working alone. I started doing masters as a learner because it was a space we were trying to explore with the nanoscale physics, uh, nanoscale transport physics lab at VITS. And you, most of the learning, it was, you know, you had to follow videos brought by John Martinez and others. Uh, luckily, quantum computers had been made available on the cloud by IBM in 2016, and we could play with those devices, but not with a lot of resources to support that learning. And the community was not as connected as it is today. But after um, 2019, I've I've been able to connect to a lot of Africans in quantum and those who are based in Africa and those in the diaspora and a lot more other people who are not African whom we have been able to have conversations with and you know um, work with and contribute to how this field is evolving. So the room to contribute is so huge and all of us you know are welcome to come into the ecosystem and begin to shape it. And it is happening now. If you look at it, there are a lot of meetups that are organized across the globe, showing you that conversations are very important, showing you that community is very important, showing you that uh, you need people to come together to exchange ideas from their different backgrounds in order to make technology work and in order to create a lasting impact or a meaningful impact to, to deliver the solutions, to work on the algorithms in a guided way Sometimes, you know, you work on things that others have tried before, and the, you, you may not even need to struggle doing the same things. So there is a very important aspect of community that I just wanted to emphasize. So if we are to grow quantum in Africa, we will definitely need to build a strong community of, which is inclusive, which allows investors, entrepreneurs, policymakers, uh, people from uh, academia to come together and to take this discussion forward and say, how do we make things work? How do we uh, build solutions that uh, fit into the context of our own local circumstances? Because technology will be meaningless if we, you are going to bring solutions that don't fit in into local circumstances, just like what is happening with classical technology. For example, in Africa, mobile money has been a hit, it has managed to be successful, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, much more than it has been in the West. It's because of our environment, our context, our, you know, our culture and the, the kind of infrastructure that we have and all that. So it is the same kind of thinking that we need to, to go through, but we can only go through that in a successful way or for progress you know, under the ambit of a community. Next slide, please. So we have got a, a strong foundation to build upon. I've mentioned about the scientific foundation that has been done, which is strictly uh, in physics and in uh, computational, um, in, in, in the computational space, like uh, high performance computing. But there are the initiatives in Africa that give us a strong foundation to take this conversation forward, to come together as a community and build something that lasts. So, those are, for example, shown on this slide, I just tried to take a few that I could find. Obviously, there are a lot of initiatives in Africa that uh, bring people together to discuss, uh, you know, science in its various forms. And on, on, on this one, I would want to share about what happened when COVID-19 
came into Africa. There is a case, I think that was reported, the first case that was reported in Nigeria, uh, which was uh, from Italy. And uh, within 48 hours of that case being reported, uh, the virus had been sequenced in Nigeria, at the University of Nigeria, because of the early efforts that had been done to build uh, what is called the African Center for Excellence on, or for Genomics uh, of Infectious Diseases. And uh, when this was built, you know, nobody thought it was, we were going to have a pandemic that was going to have uh, such an impact as we have seen from COVID-19. But because of those early investments and that visionary approach, we were able to, you know, to, to sequence uh, the virus in, within 48 hours from Africa. And like you see, when the world is seized with problems, sometimes the countries look inward and use their resources, <coughs> excuse me, to focus on solving their problems at home. And we need to do the same in Africa. And this is the reason why the conversation about the vaccine is about Africa waiting for the COVAX facility to, you know, kick, to kick in because we have to look at how to get the vaccine from wherever it is being produced to bring it to Africa. And that may happen after everybody else who is part of manufacturing it is a satisfied local need. Of course, <coughs> uh, excuse me, production is being ramped up to make sure that the vaccine, when it is produced, it is available to everyone. But uh, obviously, in practice, you are going to have more of it being distributed within local uh, um, the local community than to get it outside. So these early early investments were very uh, are very important, and we have to do the same kind of investments in Africa today. Um, we also had uh, like uh, as you see here, I think in, in at Makerere University in Uganda in in 2016-2017, they they came up with a solar bus. So those are the kind of initiatives we need in Africa. And, I am sharing these initiatives. It is because I want to just prove that we have that capacity to contribute. Because sometimes people ask me and say, you are struggling to come on a meeting because the network is not, you know, it's not behaving. Do you think we need to talk about quantum? Why don't we talk about the, these other historical problems and start solving those first before we look at the high-tech uh, developments like quantum? But I say to that, we will never catch up if we are the wait and see kind of people who are going to say, okay, let's deal with historical imbalances first. Because sometimes we, 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 may, we may never anyway. But the best way to deal with past problems sometimes is to avoid creating this whole debt of problems where you are accumulating problems and hope to solve uh, the immediate one uh, until the other one, if you see. That kind of an approach is not going to work. Africa has an opportunity of short-circuiting development. We can play at the level where the world is now and use the lessons that have been learned in the past to catch up. And even you sometimes leapfrog and, 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 and be ahead. So these things are possible. And the, this kind of initiatives we see in Africa, uh, like in Morocco, building the largest uh, uh, solar uh, power station, those things are happening in Africa and they can, we can still you know, extend <laughs> We've also seen Arua, um, an association of, of research universities in Africa, coming, <clears throat> bringing universities in Africa together to just make uh, this whole aspect of collaboration and um, people working together in the continent happen. To show you that there is need for that uh, cross pollination of ideas, for us to come together as Africans and begin to work on things that are tangible. And we can do it and we can achieve. And the, all these things that I'm sharing, I'm just trying to prove to you to say the foundations to build upon are there because there are already other people who have seen uh, that we need to work together. And for argument's sake, the United States of Africa, this is why it has always been a topic uh, uh, for a long time. It is because when we come together as a continent, we've got a greater opportunity of catching up with the developments in the world and of leapfrogging, leapfrogging um, uh, you know, most of these countries, because we have the youngest population, we've got um, 
you know, a market of around 1.5 billion people, and there is there are a lot of opportunities. We have a lot of problems to solve, and that is why Africa is the next market. And this is why the world looks at Africa. There are a lot of problems to solve. But it will be said if those problems are going to be solved according to how outsiders look at us. So it is important for us to take a very active role, to be involved at the beginning. And thanks to the drive that was done by IBM and through QSKIT uh, to also just you know bring access to quantum devices on the, on the cloud, come to Africa, initiate this community, community building efforts, and just show us what is possible when we come together. It's up to us to you know, ride on that and not wait for IBM to run another, you know, conference, but uh, build on that success and come together as Africans and build on that success because we've seen that it works and uh, do much better. Next slide, please. So uh, yesterday, just as I was going through Twitter later on in the evening, I came across this uh, tweet. Uh, sharing about David Gatu and Moses Kinyua from uh, Kenya, who made um, you know, a robot that is operated by brain signal. Amazing way to also build on the reason on, on why I'm saying we've got the capacity. And interestingly, somebody was you know questioning whether this has been shared publicly and celebrated in Kenya. And uh, your guess is as good as mine. We we don't make as much noise about development in Africa. And we don't use our media channels, our, you know, we don't build platforms. So we have to build platforms where we showcase our African talents, achievements in Africa. And this is what, what, this is what we want to do for quantum as well. There's a lot that is happening in research uh, and in startup communities. There are investors in Africa who may be looking at where to put their money, but are not seeing anything. But when we come together as a community, all these things have a way of surfacing and of being amplified. And we begin to know what is happening and what needs to be done. So, Bonrad uh, there is sharing um, about what we need to do because we have access to social media now and to this whole network and connectivity, and we can use it for good by promoting our our people, by promoting our technology, and bringing people together and taking these conversations forward. Uh, next slide, please. That leads me now to, to One Quantum and say, what do we want to do at One Quantum? So at, at One Quantum Africa is a platform that we are building to bring together all the stakeholders, like I mentioned, the people in research, uh, people in academia, which is research, and people in business, policymakers, and say, how do we move quantum forward in Africa? We don't have all the solutions. So we want to create a platform where these conversations can happen. We bring people together. We equip them with the knowledge and skills. We also equip them with the resources that allow them to succeed, whoever they are, as long as they are interested in quantum tech, as long as they are active in quantum tech, they should have an opportunity to contribute. And they also need to be connected to the global community so that they learn from others, so that even what we do in Africa can also influence others out of outside Africa. Because the time to look inward and think that solutions in Africa are only for Africans is over. Solutions that are built in Africa can be applied outside. We've seen that happen. The model contact tracing that emanated from Africa that has been applied in the United States. And there's no limit to how we can you know, contribute at that level. So I yet to share a quote here by uh, the chairman for One Quantum, the global community, uh, and Andre M. Kunish, uh, to say One Quantum is our effort to provide a stage, voice, and safe place for all in quantum to come together and uh, you know, build a successful industry which is fair and profitable to everyone who participates in it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so to leave a, a, a time for questions, I'm just going to, to, to run through the next slides and make sure that we've got an opportunity to have a discussion. Um, these slides, I guess, we are always going to be able to share with, with, with attendees and those who are interested later on. You can move to the next slide as well, um, because I think I've... So we were saying, how do we do this? Obviously, we know young people want to have fun. So our communities are places of fun as well. We want to bring people to these communities. And when I say young people, I'm involving everyone. I am young at heart. I'm not sure if I'm young in, in terms of chronological age, but I'm young at heart. And it is because I'm always curious and willing to learn each and every day. And I think all people are involved in these initiatives and 
everybody, you know, is involved in some aspect of life and learning. So that way we all stay fresh and young. So the one quantum Africa is our place as Africans to come together, to learn, to collaborate and to exchange and have fun as well. So we are sharing some um, uh, regalia from our past events, which we hold every week uh, on Wednesday at 1500 SAST, which is 3 p.m. SAST. And you, everybody is invited. And I think I explained time and again why it's for everyone. Yes, in the beginning, it is going to be difficult to unpack some of the aspects that are related to quantum mechanics and linear algebra and OPC. But as we go, I think the efforts across the world are to simplify quantum tech and make sure that it is accessible to everyone. And I think you also heard from past speakers, they had to speak again and again about how the field is moving very fast to make sure that it is accessible to everyone and everybody can understand so that they can apply it in their own context as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you can learn more about our efforts, and I think we're sharing details there. You can send me an email anytime. I can find me on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on uh, Facebook. Let's take this conversation forward, open to your suggestions and ideas. Um, the idea is we want you to be there. So we also have a newsletter which we send out to just inform people about development in Africa and also allow people in Africa to learn about developments that are happening across the globe so that you have context of what's happening in the space. We have also made available some of the data I've been sharing, the earlier slides at qisdata.com. Uh, you can access some of it for free. Of course, some of it is paid, especially the current one, but there is a lot of free data which you can use to ground your research, to make a case as you talk about quantum, to just understand where we are and where we need to be and what trends we are learning about. If you need anything else that we don't have there, reach out to us and let's have a conversation on those. Next slide, please. So yeah, we get to that time where we can have a conversation. So yeah, I'll bait all the challenges that we faced in the beginning. I'm happy to say we are just two minutes shy of time, but uh, it's been a pleasure to come on this platform and have an opportunity to share and, and have a conversation with you. I hope I was uh, um, audible and I hope that I was speaking in a way you could hear. Sometimes I've got a habit of speaking so fast, but I was trying my best and I always, uh, you know, I'm not ready to hear from, from the floor. What are your suggestions, ideas, and comments? If there are questions as well, hoping that I can answer them, then bring them on. Otherwise, thank you very much for this, and let's do it. Let's build quantum in Africa. And it starts here, it starts with you and me, and we have a strong foundation to build upon, and I can't wait to see what we achieve next together. Thank you. And thank you so much for your presentation and your time. Uh, I actually have a question for you, uh, and uh, we are very short on time, but I'll be uh, as fast as possible. Uh, how do you think, uh, or what is the main steps to 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 initiate a quantum startup uh, in 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 Africa or in African country? What do we actually need? Uh, but before uh, you answer my question, I think uh, Professor Ahmed would like to say something. So uh, please go ahead, Professor. Uh, actually, I, it's not a question. I'd like to thank Farai very much for his very inspiring talk and for what he is doing uh, in, in Quantum Africa. I think this is a very good start. Uh, uh, and I think uh, more uh, uh, activists like this will make uh, uh, Africa uh, on the map very soon. So ju just thanking him. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you, bro. So um, back again to my question. Uh, how do you think, uh, or what is the main es essential ways to to uh, to create a quantum startup in in African countries? Um, in terms of startups, so. Um, it's a very difficult question to answer because we, we still need a lot of things to, to support ecosystem. So I think quantum tech hubs are a good start. So what we need, are, you know, quantum tech hubs that, um, that are successful. So the first thing that you need to do is to build an ecosystem. You need to, to build a hub where we bring together all these various players because what I think is the challenge is to frame your idea and give it structure that it becomes a business. So that is a, a, a long transformation. 
and it needs an environment where it can happen. So I'm, I'm speaking from the experience that I had when I was at VIT, because VIT had the Chimalahong pressing, which is an initiative between VIT and IBM, which has been trying to achieve the same objective. Um, so usually when you have an idea and you are in academia or you are outside, it's about finding a hub. And it is when we build communities like what we have done at Wankwandam Africa, that we, we have this conversation and we can make available resources because we have mentoring resources, we have got resources on how to structure your business ideas so that they become viable, they can make sense to investors. Because your investors will always need information in a way they understand, not in a way that you understand. So this divide between um, you being excited by your idea and investors looking at its viability is something that we have to bring. And how do we do that? We need to have a community first, which is where you can bring all these players together. And when people ask this question, we have got people, we have got practical experience who can answer this. And if it's about resources, then we have got resources that you can use and say, this is how I'm going to think about my idea. These are the things that I'm not seeing. And these are the things that I need to put in place in order to make this idea appeal to an investor, to appeal for funding. Then if I'm going to go into the market, how do I make a minimum viable product? And what is the market going to you know, consider? How do I test my devices? How do I test my idea? So sometimes initially you need to test your idea on people and you need access to these people and they have to be the right people who can add value to that conversation. So a community is a good start. Where if you've got an idea, you come to a community. After the community, we move into a hub where there are now practical steps that you can take. They are now, uh, the infrastructure is now there to support your growth journey. And from there, I think we will see startups having more, uh, more chance of being successful. Because after that whole route, you begin to understand whether your idea is something that you can build around or how do you need to shape it? What kind of partners do you need? Because you're not going to do an, a, a startup on your own. So an idea is just one thing. There are a lot of people who have got brilliant ideas in the world, but it, that will never see the light of day because they're not structured properly. And they are not, um, you know, they don't happen to pass through a, a conversation which allows them obviously to, to, to get inspired and support as well as to be led to the next guy in the network who can make it uh, real. I'm not sure if that answered your question, but that's all I could say, I guess. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your answer. It's quite good. Uh, so uh, is there any question from the participants? Or anyone would like to, to raise uh, their hands? OK, I think uh, I think that uh, sums up everything and uh, it concludes everything. So th thank you so much for your time and your effort and the presentation. It, it is wonderful and uh, I'm looking forward for uh, more cooperation with you in the near future. Thank you so much, Mr. Farai. Yeah, and, uh, and I think uh, Professor Ahmed may yeah, want thank to say you, Farai. Just thanking him very much and uh, we are looking forward for more cooperation with uh, his community. Uh, this is uh, in the benefits of quantum in Africa, of course. Thank you very much. Looking forward to having more of you joining our meetings on One Quantum Africa every Wednesday, like perhaps later on today. I know today is a bad day, but in the future. And let's take this conversation forward. It's my pleasure to have been here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, I will stop recording right now. Thank you.